just uh, review how the markets performed yesterday. The JSC ending 167 points higher. Good performers were the resources. The financials not doing particularly well, though. Well, the financials, uh, you will have seen that no, no change in interest rates, you know, in many countries around the world, uh, you are seeing the likelihood of interest rates rising, not necessarily right away, but uh, there's, a, there's a feeling that the period when you, you had inflation falling and interest rates uh, declining is probably over. That said, I mean, in many cases, you don't have a need for interest rates to rise very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also have large economic slacks, so or probably a period of relatively low inflation. So right. it's still not a, an unfavorable environment for right. financials. Resources stocks, you go to ask, so how much, how far, how far can they go? Yeah. Really, especially with commodity prices having already risen quite a bit in the in the, in the recovery. I mean, how have you got cities that you can probably get a bit more juice right. in that commodity price rally? But the, the, the bulk might have happened. Okay, one point one. 19% uh, rise in the resources sector on the back of a week around 7.4. I'm sure the exporters are a little bit more relieved, but they need real significant uh, weakness in that round though. Yes, I mean, it's not 720 or 740, which is going to make a, a very big difference. My feeling is that, uh, yes, at the current level, the round is uh, um, uncompetitive for exporters, both versus the US dollar and also versus uh, a basket of currencies on a trade weighted basis, because we often compare the run just to the dollar. And of course, the dollar has been weak against all the crosses. But uh, in, in trade weighted terms, especially in real trade weighted terms, if you take into account interest rate differentials, the run is basically back to where it was right. before the whole depreciation of 2008. And we are pushing towards level which might, we might have right. lost in 2006. But when we had these levels of run strength before, we, uh, we, we lost market share. South African exporters were not managing to grow as fast as world demand. Let's talk about what could have influenced uh, a variety of factors in the markets over the last 24 hours. Tito Mboweni's decision to keep rates unchanged. There was a consensus view uh, by uh, economists polled that he wasn't going to do anything. But there was some hope, an inkling of hope, that he would have left consumers with a farewell gift mm -hmm. of 50 basis points cut. Yes, there was, uh, there was a little bit of media talk that maybe he was going to do a, a farewell gift. But that was more based on emotional rather than uh, economic arguments. And right. indeed, uh, the consensus was looking for no change. The market was braced for no change because to a large extent, the situation had not changed radically right. from the previous month when they left rates on hold and indi indicated a neutral right. stance. Growth is trudging along. Inflation is easing, but without falling very sharply. That said, I thought it was quite interesting that the tone of the statement was more on the dovish side than, uh, than last month. Basically, they are fairly comfortable with inflation uh, falling, in particular with, uh, with a stronger rand, and they, they point out that the economic recovery is tentative. So the, the door to additional easing is not completely closed. Okay, Mr. Mboweni did say that for now he sees no real risks to inflation. It's coming within the target range. But the caveat are the ESCOM tariff mm. hikes that we've spoken about at length. And if uh, that proposal by ESCOM is approved and consumers have to start factoring in an additional 45% in paying their electricity bills, inflation will spike again by mid next year. Well, definitely, you'd have a bit of an acceleration. Not really a spike, because we already had like increases of electricity tariffs, so about 25 30% for the past couple of years. So that is already in inflation figures. But where, whereas we could have hoped for a bit of a, a deceleration in inflation based on a lesser increase in electricity prices, we'll have maybe four or five tenths more towards the end of next year just because of a higher in electricity tariff increase if ESCOM gets its 45%. So uh, obviously this is something that risks uh, affecting other prices as well and, and creating a uh, and a permanent increase in expectation, which is what the central bank should be concerned of, not just a one-off effect, but the indirect effect, the diffusion to other prices and to wage settlements as well. Okay, let's talk about uh, what the central bank should be concerned about moving forward. We've seen a cabinet reshuffle is what they're calling it, really, but I think many people just say we're now seeing definition of what the presidency looks like and the new portfolio of economic development with Ibrahim Patel as the minister now seems to be the nerve center of government policy. It is Ibrahim Patel who's going to be setting an outlook and already with it have come very, very strong concerns that the unions are firmly in the corridors of power now. 
Well, that is, uh, that is perhaps a legitimate concern because the unions have definitely been regarding Mr. Patel as uh, their man in cabinet. It's not our man in Havana, it's uh, our man in Pretoria. <laughs> you know, now, of course, that doesn't mean that Mr. Patel, as a minister, will have the same language and implement the same actions, which Mr. Patel, former head of the Clothing and Textile Workers Union, was advocating. There, there is such a thing uh, <coughs> as uh, government pragmatism and having to confront realities. So yeah, it's, it's still not very clear. You know, yes, I mean, his role has been reaffirmed for what was very much a, a side position in the early months of the presidency. The initial plans for a very powerful planning commission, these have been, have been clipped in part to appease the concerns of the left. But I would say also to which extent is Mr. Zuma really changing the roles in government? To which extent is he uh, making a tactical move to appease uh, some of his critics on the left without uh, really changing policy? So far, the act in the facts, policies has not really changed. So we'll have to see really over the, over the long term. What has happened, though, is a report has been leaked to the press. The presidency is denying its authenticity. But basically, within this report are rumors that government intends to freeze the RAND at a predetermined uh, exchange rate to stop the volatility of the currency or the fluctuation in mm. the currency, but also to try to support this idea that it needs to be weakened to boost the export yeah. sector. Yeah, now that, that's been a, a long point of debate. And my personal feeling is that the RAND, the volatility of the RAND and the occasional bursts of appreciation like we're seeing now, mm. followed by the, the, the big uh, depreciation like we saw last year, right. are detrimental to uh, stability of business expectations, to uh, uh, moderation of inflation, and to, in the long term to investment and growth. Now, is this a relation to freeze it? And generally, you don't freeze a currency. You fix it, or you peg it. But this report is very weird. You know, this word freeze <laughs> is rarely used, which is why Mr. Mbowini made jokes about the fridge uh, to, to, to the media yesterday in the press conference. The problem is, in South Africa, it would be very difficult to implement successfully because we have few reserves and we have structural current account deficits. We're not China. China has a lot of reserves and current account surpluses. They can do whatever they want with their currency. Uh, Russia's uh, reserves because of general current account surpluses with energy prices, they can manipulate the ruble. For us, we'd have to put it at a, at a very cheap level to make sure we have a current account surplus, and then we have the risk of inflation because we don't have stable. Yeah. So, so there, there, there are many structural measures which would have to accompany a weak rent policy. And just a final question, just in terms of this report that was frozen, is that Apparently, Mr. Patel has been meeting with uh, Bladen Zimande, the Minister for Higher Education, and obviously within it, this component of jobs, skills and growth. But apparently the talk from this new economic cluster is that the mandate for the state should be job creation and not necessarily a growth-oriented mandate. So if the economy grows, that's great. But they will have an expansionary budget trying to create as many jobs as possible, trying to enhance as much training as possible. And so things like a budget deficit are not going to be factors of concerns. Issues such as economic growth are not going to be priorities. Well, my feeling is you need economic growth to have jobs. Yeah. There's no, there's no other way around. That's and a classical I think, I think, perspective. I think, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a factual perspective. You know, I don't know economies uh, uh, which, have, which have created jobs, uh, or decent jobs, quality jobs, uh, uh, without, without economic growth. You may have said that the, the Soviet bloc, everybody was employed, but they were employed. They, they, were, they were so falsely employed. They were employed. They didn't have anything to, to buy on the, on the, on the shelves. So that, I, think, I think they know, they know in the economic clusters and the leadership of the ANC that right. you need growth to have jobs, and then you need some, some fiscal prudence. Now, is there, is there a need to develop skills? Yes, absolutely. Is there a need to create more jobs and to get more people uh, into, into the workforce? Yes, absolutely. Um, is the way to create it uh, through public sector jobs and big deficits? I don't think so. But already we've seen uh, Mr. Zuma toning down the ambitions of creating 500,000 new jobs before the end of the year. So I'm not overly worried at this stage.